So, it, you know. It, I want to highlight that too because I mean that, that is something I've, I've noticed particularly with yourself. You've been you're quite communicative, and you've like with what's going on in council and just what's going on in the community in general. Um, it seems like you go out of your way to make that happen. In addition to um being an advocate for certain areas of the, of the town that, that feel underrepresented, like, like Rolling Hills and a couple others. Like, I mean, even when our first discussion with Hanson, um, it, it, it's just something I've noticed the, the past few months that you are a strong advocate for these communities that do not feel like they've, they've been paid enough attention to, which I, I think is a great thing. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. I don't just do it blindly. Like if I, oh. if I don't agree with something or I don't think it's the right thing to do, then, you know, I'm going to stand my ground. I don't just fold my tent. So, yeah. you know, I think transit and, and the OPP are two things that would show that that's the case. Yeah. Um, Hans, Hanson to me, um, we had significant amount of people suggesting that this was the wrong development. The unfortunate piece about it is, is the developer in lots of ways has us, right? Like yep. it's hard to get them to do different things. But the reality of the whole thing is we had a massive amount of people saying within our town that they didn't want that. And then I think about what Orangeville is to me. And Orangeville is not Mississauga. Orangeville is not these, these areas in Brampton that are popping up. And, and I mean no disrespect to those two municipalities. But, you know, we have a different look here. We have a different feel. And uh, basically, you're going to have a very jammed in neighborhood right on Hanson Boulevard. And um, yeah. candidly, that's not what I want for my town. I don't, I don't want to see that. Um, I wish everyone the best, but I can tell you if I'm still on council in five or six years when these things are built, first thing I'm going to hear about is, is there's not enough parking, the streets are too tight. Uh, there, there's going to be issues. Yep. Uh, snow removal will be a problem. Um, you know, I, I can see it now. So why would we want that? I, I just don't, I don't get it. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. And then there's been issues, uh, you know, you mentioned the uh, you know, Rolling Hills calls themselves the forgotten corner. Yeah. And we've already covered Rolling Hills. But but another corner that's forgotten in lots of ways, in my opinion, is uh, Veterans Way subdivision. Yeah. And essentially that would be, you know, behind the Shoppers Drug Mart in the, um, you know, the, the west end of town off of, you know, kind of behind Broadway. And uh Lots of ways I, I don't get it. Like w we could have done certain things for that community and, and haven't done it. The, the travesty that there's only one way out of that subdivision and lots of those homes now are almost 10 years old. It's lost on me why we would have allowed to have a builder do that in the first place and not have a bridge built. Um, it's, it's, it's really inefficient. And then there's been issues in that community where they've asked for certain things. And one example was, is there is an area that is rough and unsightly um, and it's not being maintained. Um, to me, the, the area should be cut and looked after. And it was a minimal expense and the residents wanted it to happen. And yet, you know, we, we weren't able to make that uh, come to fruition. So... I don't know. To me, if uh, a large majority of residents are asking for something and financially it's not a huge imposition to the town, uh, I think we should do that. And I am oversimplifying that that problem because there was some environmental pieces to it. They wanted to naturalize the area. Oh. But it's it's not something that I thought was beautiful. And, uh, and the residents that live there didn't like it either. So, um, you know, I linked in with them and wanted to advocate for them and, and try and help that uh, happen along. And I guess the last piece for me would be is, I think that um, people within our town are craving communication with their elected officials. Yep. And, um, you know, I, I know what I signed up for. Um, people know where I live. Um, I put my phone number on social media. They can call me if they want. I leave my um, email on there. I'm responsive to them as best I can on social media. I'll admit at times I get overwhelmed. It's, uh, it can be quite a bit, but I, can I try and get back to people and, um, I would treat them the, you know, the way I would want to be treated if I was a resident. And sometimes I can help them and, uh, it's actually quite simple and easy to do and they feel great about it. And so do I, and other times I'm, I'm just not able to get it done for, for a variety of reasons. But I, I do think we have an obligation as town councillors to make sure we're reaching out to these folks. Like, uh, 
one last piece I'll, I'll throw at you was uh, there was an incident in uh, Veterans Way where subdivisions, they've got their pathways and they weren't being cleared by the snow. Yeah. Well, I yeah. met with the resident. I said, do you, do you mind if I come over to see you? So I took my lunch hour and went over to understand the problem. And the reality is it was just being missed. Um, it was being missed over time. And uh, town staff was great. They corrected the issue quickly. The resident received the accolades for, for calling the local counselor. But you know, in lots of ways, I just communicated with folks and was able to make it happen. But uh, I don't know, it's the resident who made the issue and then town staff, you know, made the connection who really did the work and then town staff who did the follow up. So um, I don't know, I, I just I really enjoy that aspect of the job and COVID has made that difficult and probably not as rewarding. But uh, I don't know, that's connecting with the folks and um, making a difference is why I signed up, why I wanted to do this. Well, well, just looping back, like this kind of loops back to the beginning of our discussion. I mean, you being that way and, and other other counselors being that way and other people on council, it, it prevents people from signing up f- for just uh, trying to correct one personal grievance that they have, um, which is what some people have been characterized as doing. Um, they have an issue that they want to solve, like a personal one, and they, they sign up, again, not knowing what council actually is, and then they get there and they – then nobody ends up getting help, including themselves because they don't know – understand the process and what they can actually do on council to actually correct an issue, whether mm-hmm. it's even under the jurisdiction of council. Like, yeah. I, I would say to you that it requires um, a fair bit of patience. Like you know, yeah. I've shared with you today my frustrations with certain things. And you want to make sure that you're able to work with at least three other people because you can't do it by yourself, right? So nope. if you're just going to muscle through and tell everybody how it's going to work, it doesn't work. It's uh, it's about working with six other community-minded people on, on a council and trying to make the best decision. And sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So I, I've tried to be as e- even keel as I possibly can. But, you know, I'll admit sometimes I um, sometimes I get angry. Sometimes I'm in a bit of a hurry and I, I see the solution as clear as day. And unfortunately, maybe I haven't done a good job of explaining why my solution is the best solution. So it takes longer than it should. Um, so anyway, patience is the, the call. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know where to take that, Josh. I uh I think if, if I was sitting at home today and thinking about running and, you know, if I hadn't, you know, as an, as an, as a new person, what would the advice I would give is just make sure you're going to have the time and yeah. make sure you understand why you're doing it, you know, and, uh, you're committed, you're four years in committed. And, um, I think you want to do a good job because the people who are watching you are your friends, your family and, and your neighbors. Uh, what a personal situation, right? Like, why would you want to fail them? And then walk around town afterwards. It's um, it's a fear of mine that I, I want to make sure that I'm always on top of that, and people are proud to say that I'm representing them in some sort of way. Well, a hundred percent. I mean, we have over forty plus members of council throughout the county, and I mean, everyone's different, and there's all different d- dynamics on each of these councils, and, and it's, especially when you start looking in the past as well. Um, these towns aren't consistent. Yeah. Um, the councils change things a lot, and I mean, yep. and you can learn a lot from from every one of these people. And I mean, there there are some that are aren't there for the best of reasons that aren't there to to better the community, and there are some that are genuinely there to do that. And it is not an act; like they are living it. And I mean, you you like going back to your roots, like going back to like the remuner, remuneration committee with uh, th- that's what you first joined on with uh, Orangeville, right? Yeah, it was. And, and I mean, that's that is extremely important. I mean, like you said, like it's I, I think that's kind of been a, a big influence. Uh, I maybe I could say from what you like from what you've told me, like, because I mean, ma- managing the checkbook and making sure like watching watching the, the dollars that go out, starting off with council and then going from there. I mean, th- there are some that do not take that approach. Um, so I, I mean, I think there's many that can be grateful for that. Cause I mean, that is something that people like to complain about regardless of the municipality is that there's too much spending and taxes are too high. <laughs> yeah. I guess, you know, to, to, to offer it back and if I was to, to speak about our council, cause I, I don't, 
uh, I, you know, full on, I know who the county players are, but I don't get to yeah. see them in action as much. I just, you know, candidly, I don't have time to yeah. uh, to dive into their details as much as I, I would be interested in. But I can tell you for our council, like, um, you know, there's certainly times where, um, you know, Joe Andrews and I don't see eye to eye or, uh, you know, God, Lisa Post and I don't... Uh, <laughs> don't figure it out or the mayor and I don't don't get along but there's a high level of respect and there's a high level of um, desire and need and obligation to make sure that we're all doing things in the right way and I, I think that's really important so even though we disagree um, you know I, I'm proud to be sitting up there with those other six people and uh, hold my head high uh, and honored to be sitting there with them as well so all good folks and I, I would just like to ask do you have any goals for police services council and the town for 2021? 